So what I'm doing now is making that base plate adapter I told you I had to do. I had to make a, it's actually just a fiberglass spacer. But what it is, is a, it's the whole reason I'm raising this thing up off the stainless platform is to be able to route the cables from the motor up and down through that rubber deck gland. And uh, we've got the, I've got the uh, windlass inside here to show you. But I'm starting to cut out this as an adapter plate. And I'm hollowing out the middle here so I can route the wires that are going to come and exit the bottom side of this. For all my pattern making, for all the stuff that I've done on the boat, I use this really thin uh, scotch double stick tape. But what this is, is basically I'm creating a hollowed out section in the G10. Once I get this cut out, I'm going to duplicate it in this set of G10, and then I'll just stick these two pieces together with that same tape, and then use one as a pattern for the other, and then they get epoxied together after I've hollowed them all out and I'm at, I've figured out my cable routing. This is actually the bottom piece. The top piece won't be the same, but it'll make more sense once I get it all epoxy together. Yeah, so this is pretty much the uh, layout here for the spacer pad. As you can see, it's like three-dimensional with a cutout. So there's some wire routing availability down here. I think it'll all work out. So now it's starting to make more sense. So here's the platform that I made, and it's G10 fiberglass, two layers. I'm going to laminate them together with epoxy, but now you can see why it had to be cut the way it is. Needed to route the wires down underneath here and off to the side of the windlass bracket because I don't want to drill holes through the bowsprit. Yeah, so here's the uh, cutout and how I'm gonna route everything up and around and through these two little back holes. See these little holes right here and right there that's where the wires go and it's kind of a two one pattern and that is why this thing is hollowed out the way it is all right i got the windless bracket back from the welder he welded on these tabs on the sides for the extension for the new windlass uh, i also had him stitch up a couple of little things that uh, little holidays that appeared in the edges so after I cut off the old stuff, I had to have that filled in and ground back. So here we are. So like a jerk, uh, don't do what I did. So when I got this thing back, I was going to run the nuts down. Uh, there was going to be a little bit of a knocking back and forth to get the studs lined up exactly with the footprint because due to heat and everything during the welding process, the studs do warp and shift a little bit. Put the studs on yesterday and then like a dummy, I didn't put anti-seize on the freaking threads. So I got one that wouldn't come back off. And it spins like this. It's a unique thread size because it's basically metric. So I went with the next nut that I went with the next size studs that fit. And that was 7 16 20 threads per inch. And luckily I have a I have a tapping die. And I can actually chase the threads, but now I got a problem here where this one won't come off. So I'm going to have to fart around trying to cut this nut loose and then clean up all the threads and make sure it works. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bummed right now. I got way too anxious and that's what happens. All right, that was rough. So I got a tapping die right here, 7 16 20 threads, and now I just gotta run these things. But the problem is, I think between a couple of them, I don't have the right uh, enough clearance, but yeah. So I can set this thing up and uh, chase all the threads, oil it, use anti-seize, put the nuts back on, 
dig, 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 dig with a hammer, kind of align it up with the, uh, the actual footprint of the windlass, and then get back to work on the uh, G10 bracket. Whew. Man, that scared me. All right, so acorn nuts abide. Got the threads chased, everything works nice. Next step is to tap everything into place, make sure that this lines up with the footprint of this, and especially the G10 backer plate. I still gotta do some work on this thing. There's two half inch uh, panels here, routed out at different profiles, and I gotta, I gotta glue it together and put a coat of paint on it because G10 is not UV resistant. And then it's going to be a whole bunch of grinding and sanding and polishing and stuff that you're probably not even going to want to watch on uh, YouTube. So anyway, thanks again for joining us. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for next time when we, uh, we get into the rest of this monstrosity, which is the fiberglass base plate and finishing up the wiring to the uh, terminals here. I still got to cut a hole in the deck uh, for the uh, cable gland. Uh, you can always see us on our website svramblon.com of course. Uh, if you want to hit me up with questions or anything about what we're doing to our boat uh, don't hesitate. Shoot me an email at that email address through our contact page. And also yeah you can find us sometimes on Facebook more often on the Instagram just for little pictures of things I've done. So Anyway, yeah, it's like 100 degrees, it's hot, I'm sweaty. <laughs>